Good morning and welcome to All Souls. We bid you welcome who come with weary spirit seeking rest, who come with troubles that are too much with you, who come hurt and afraid. We bid you welcome who come with hope in your hearts, who come with anticipation in your step, who come proud and joyous, we bid you welcome, who are seekers of a new faith. Let us pray. Holy and beautiful, the custom which brings us together in the presence of the Most High to face our ideals to remember our loved ones in absence, to give thanks, to make confession, to offer forgiveness, to be enlightened and to be strengthened. Through this quiet time breeds the worship of ages, the cathedral music of history. Three unseen guests attend, faith, hope and love. Let us prepare in our hearts a place for them. Amen. Good morning. Quite a few of us here occasionally feel we are aging. So I have chosen a prayer of a 17th century nun who has remained anonymous. On a personal note, I think this prayer could help me and some others I know. 17th century nun's prayer. Lord, Thou knowest better than I know myself that I am growing older and will someday be old. Keep me from the fatal habit of thinking I must say something on every subject and on every occasion. Release me from craving to straighten out everybody's affairs. Make me thoughtful but not moody helpful, but not bossy. With my vast store of wisdom, it seems a pity not to use it all. But thou knowest, Lord, that I want a few friends at the end. Keep my mind free from the recital of endless details. Give me wings to get to the point. Seal my lips on my aches and pains. They are increasing, and love of rehearsing them is becoming sweeter as the years go by. I dare not ask for grace enough to enjoy the tales of others' pains, but help me to endure them with patience. I dare not ask for improved memory but for a growing humility and a less cocksureness when my memory seems to clash with the memories of others. Teach me the glorious lesson that occasionally I may be mistaken. Keep me reasonably sweet. I do not want to be a saint. Some of them are so hard to live with, but a sour old person 
is one of the crowning works of the devil. Give me the ability to see good things in unexpected places and talents in unexpected people. And give me, O Lord, the grace to tell them so. Amen. Good morning. I've chosen as my reading this morning the 23rd Psalm, and it's a version I read at my uncle's funeral a number of years ago, and I would like to rededicate it this morning to Captain Sir Tom Moore, and also to a member of our first church congregation, Nora Truick, who passed away a week or two ago And I got to know Nora through the drama circles when she was there with the Hollywood players at the Courtyard Theatre, always ensuring they had something to eat in the production. And it was lovely to be able to watch Nora's funeral in Bournemouth Crematorium on Tuesday, led by the Reverend Nigel Playfair, the former minister in First Church. Both Nora and Captain Tom were exceptional people. And so we remember them and all those whom we've loved and lost. Lord, you are like a shepherd to me, and I have all that I need. You give me rest in meadows of green grass, 
and you lead me beside living water, where I gain new life and strength. You guide and direct me along the path that is best for me. Even when I walk in darkness and everything around me seems like death, you are there walking with me. And the promise of your love and your faithfulness helps to conquer my fear. In the sight of those who try and do me down, you invite me to sit at your table. There you offer me more than I need, and you remind me that I am significant and I am special. You call me to goodness and kindness every day of my life, and your house will be my home forever. Amen. We are all hoping sooner rather than later we will see the end of this particular lockdown and some return to normality. And of course we are hoping that the vaccine rollout will just speed up that eventuality. However, meanwhile the government has to continue with measures to assist combating the virus and getting people back to work or indeed back to school. I noticed that the UK Educational Minister, Gavin Williamson, said schools will open again in March. But he has made just one slight adjustment to the calendar. He's replacing September with March and vice versa. So the months will run January, February, September, April, June, July, August, and March. A good solution in many ways. Alistair referred earlier on to, sadly, the departure of Captain Sir Tom Moore. And, of course, we should note the great send-off he got from all of us. Captain Tom had served during the Second World War. And then we all came to know him through his amazing charm and determination to raise money for the NHS, the National Health Service. He showed us two things. One that, whatever your age, you have a contribution to make to your community. And indeed, in doing that, he even, re- he even reached number one with Michael Ball singing that Liverpool anthem, You'll Never Walk Alone. On the subject of age, it was of interest to note that the contest for the American presidency, that both candidates were in their 70s. Donald Trump is 74, and Joe Biden is 78. It should be equally remembered that despite their age, they both received the highest votes ever recorded in American presidential elections for any other candidate. We all, of course, congratulate President Biden on his election, and we wish him a fair wind on delivering his promises, especially in trying to bring Americans together. America 
is important to us. It affects everything we do, not just here, but in every part of the world. And that is why we hope for a new confident and wiser America. I think of the phrase in the United States Declaration of Independence, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Interesting, the line, the inclusion of the line, pursuit of happiness, is thanks to our own Francis Hutchison. Francis Hutchison, philosopher, born in Ulster to a family of Scottish Presbyterians. And he became known as the founding father of the Scottish Enlightenment. Again, on the subject of age, we note that Queen Elizabeth is 94 and still carries out her duties with grace and dignity. And that the Irish president Michael D. Higgins is 79 and intellectually a master of the spoken word and indeed a noted poet. As it says in Proverbs 16, 31, gray hair is a crown of glory. It is gained in a righteous life. Sadly, the virus has impacted to the greater extent on people from 75 upwards. And indeed, that's for obvious reasons. Weaker immune systems, health diminished by age. But the factoring in of age is, in my opinion, a strange obsession with media outlets who always seem to want to tell us what younger people are thinking that they're thinking this or that, as if there was some permanent feature of being young and what you think. I honestly can say I have regularly changed my mind dramatically on many things that I think about. In my opinion, age is just a number and should not stop you doing the things that you may think you're too old to achieve or to participate in, that you can still try with a modest disposition. Research has shown that age really isn't about the number of years you've been around. Aging is multidimensional. In Psalm 90, 10, it reads, the years of our age are 70, or even by reason of strength, 80. Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone, and we fly away. We should use those years wisely, and if we can, in the pursuit of happiness, before they fly away. Amen.
May the love which overcomes all differences, which heals all wounds, which puts to flight all fears, which reconciles all who are separated, be in us and amongst us now and always. Amen. God bless you all. Stay safe.